I would say that the book is alive like a bastard full of crabs. <laughs> um, meaning that it attacks us, it's a riot, it's an orgy, it's um, it's everything all at once. Uh, it's a kind of pandemonium for the book. It's uh, an anatomy of melancholy, it's an almanac of underworld slang, it's a series of vignettes that are pornographic. Uh, there's an awful lot happening in Naked Lunch, which is why it's not a lunch that's to everybody's taste. Um, I would say that it's really the kind of the wasabi on your sushi. It's not something you would actually want for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What that also means is that while it's difficult to read, it does stain the imagination. And I think it's that sense of being full of things which press buttons makes it again very special. It's a cabinet of curiosities in the old-fashioned sense of a strange collection of other objects put together in a way that somehow works. <laughs> uh, and that means that, historically speaking, it was interesting because it was kind of like a Pandora's box. It literally opened the lid on things you could put in a novel, which is also one reason why it made, uh, had big problems with censorship, inevitably, because it's also a very dirty book. In terms of its impact, I think it's actually quite hard to judge, and I don't know what you individually or collectively make of Naked Lunch, but when I think of what people like Ian Curtis or Iggy Pop made of it, I actually don't know. They maybe was attracted by the cachet of a very odd book by a man with an iconic reputation. It's hard to say, really. But I think I would sum it up by saying it's a perplexing book. It's both impossible to put down, impossible to pin down, and yet also it doesn't let you go. So for me it's enigmatic, and I particularly always like this photograph of William Burroughs, <coughs> taken in 1953 in New York, where he is posing with a sphinx. Um, I actually tried to recreate this photograph a few years ago, thinking this would be an interesting exercise. Uh, never try and act with a sphinx. It doesn't really work. <laughs> the sphinx looks great, and you look kind of steady standing next to it. Burroughs kind of carries it off, because there's something sphinx-like about him. In other words, he embodies a certain puzzle, a certain kind of secret. 